I'm kind of torn between the white and the orange. There's lemon, no. I feel like the orange picks up on that little light over there. We'll stay neutral for now. Get the Diet Coke out of the seam. Do, do you guys like the moon theme happening here? Does, does this thing make me look like I have horns? Let me know in the comments below. Don't hold back. As promised, this week I am back to discuss my feelings about the Fujifilm X-T4. I was in the market for a hybrid camera that could do it all, such as shoot my YouTube videos with, go out and do street photography, potentially do some professional shoots, personal portraiture, and the X-T4 ticked all of those boxes. To be honest, I was a little apprehensive about selling off all of my Sony gear to switch completely over to the, the Fuji ecosystem. But now that I've had about two weeks to play around with this, this beast, I have absolutely no regrets. So I thought I would sit down and have a little chat with you and discuss what what my feelings are so far. I'm gonna chat about what I like about it, what I'm not so crazy about, and I also wanna talk about how I'm going to integrate the X-T4 with my Fujifilm X100V, which pretty much was the gateway drug into the Fujifilm ecosystem. So, <laughs> clearly I am here to stay. Uh, so, so gather around, grab a cup of something, and let's get into things. Let's, let's talk about weight because I, my arm is getting a smidge tired holding this beast up. Um, so if you are tuning in again, uh, you might recall that I sold off my Sony a6600 along with all of my other lenses that I had for it. Uh, and that included a 16 to 55 millimeter 2.8, which is basically the equivalent of the Fujinon 16 to 55 millimeter 2.8. I basically did a equal swap of gear when it came to switching ecosystems. And I have to admit my Sony a6600 with that lens was a little bit lighter but as I said, not by much. The weight difference is so minor that it's not a deal breaker for me. In fact, I'll put the weight differences up in the doobly-doo up here in case you are curious. Uh, and these are the weights with both uh, the 16 to 55 millimeter on both kits, if that makes any sense. The other thing that I noticed that I started doing more with this camera than I have with any other camera that I've owned is that I'm starting to take more photos looking through the viewfinder as opposed to chimping and looking at my screen all the time. Um, I love the fact that Fujifilm doesn't allow you to chimp. Me chimping meaning, you know, take a picture and then look at what you got. I'm sure you can set it up for that, but by default, it just doesn't give you a preview, which I think is pretty awesome. It's like a surprise. You come home and you get to look back on all the photos you took. Uh, whereas, you know, when you chimp, you look down, it's it's such a waste of time and it takes you out of the moment. Um, so I really appreciate that. And the fact that I'm taking more photos looking through the viewfinder as opposed to looking at the screen, I don't know why that is. I don't know how that happened, but I just feel so much more inclined to look through the viewfinder and frame up. And lately I've been taking a lot of portrait photos. I don't, I, again, I can't explain it. This is just the magic of Fuji I'm learning where I'm just suddenly doing things differently, whether it's, I don't, whether it's great or good or I'm improving, I have no idea, but I'm liking, I'm liking where our relationship is going. The other thing that I'm really enjoying are the manual dials at the top. I would have never thought that I would get a lot of use out of these. I thought they were kind of gimmicky and oh, they just put that there to make it look like a vintage camera. No, my friends, no, no. This is awesome. This is great because it's cold out right now and I've got to wear gloves because yeah, again, small tiny lady hands get cold quite easily. Uh, so when it's cold out there, I can just easily adjust my exposure just by twitching these knobs, twitching, turning, just by turning knobs and it, it's one and you're done. It's so great. Uh, not to mention manual focus, which is something that I've never really taken advantage of with my Sony or my Canon but I think with the peak focus setting, I think that's right, where you push the button halfway down and then you adjust the manual focus ring, um, it highlights everything that's in focus in red. And for some reason, I just think that's so cool and helpful and I just wanna do it all the time. Because yeah, whenever I look for lenses, I'm, you know, when I see manual focus, I'm just like, ah, oh, no, that's not for me. But now, now I'm kind of intrigued by the available options when it comes to manual focus lenses. They are, they are more budget friendly, I hear. But yeah, at the end of the day, I'm just finding this camera to be so incredibly tactile. You know, it doesn't feel like a digital computer compared to my Sony. And while I did have reservations about selling off all of my Sony gear, I regret nothing. I really don't regret anything now. I'm just so happy 
with with this camera guys it's it's my new best friend and i know i say that about every camera that i show off on on this on this channel but i mean i i think this is real this time these are real feelings right now the other thing that i really like about this camera that wasn't necessarily a must-have when it came to purchasing uh are the two dual sd card slots in the back and i know a lot of professional photographers use this for events uh so when you have two sd cards in here you can have uh, one SD card as your prime and the other as a backup um, But for me this really comes in handy when it comes to shooting videos like this because I have a tendency to go on for quite some time before I'm <laughs> ready to edit uh, So it's nice and handy when I have two cards in here and once one card is filled up It just automatically flips over to the next card and I don't have to stop and replace my uh, my SD card with a blank one. So that was a nice surprise. Um, and I know down the line, uh, while I'm not doing any professional shooting right now, once Corona times are over and done, I have grand plans to uh, start dipping my toes into professional photography. I would love nothing more to start doing events, weddings, uh, professional portraiture. I would love to get into that. So I know down the road, two dual card slots are gonna come in handy for that. Last but not least, I would be remiss not to chat about film simulations. They are awesome, and I really love shooting, especially in Classic Negative and Eterna. Even Astia, even though I'm not that much into saturated photos, it's really fun to just get those occasional pops. While I love the film simulations, I still have a tendency to shoot raw and edit them in Lightroom later. Um, it's just, I'm, I'm just a control freak, and I just like color grading my photos to my liking. I think once we're allowed to travel again and go on real vacations and have parties and see friends and family, uh, I'll take more advantage of the JPEG option and film simulations, but right now I'm really enjoying editing uh, through raw files. And, and yeah, so uh, that is what I'm really enjoying about the Fuji X-T4 thus far. Uh, but again, as a viewer mentioned, there are lots of things to love about Fuji and there's plenty of things under the hood. Plenty of things that I still have to explore and unpack, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but now I'm just gonna quickly cover things that I'm I'm not too crazy about. Uh, and again, these things are really, really small, and that, I guess, number one are, are the menus. But I feel like complaining about the menu is so trivial because I feel like no matter what brand of camera you're using, everyone's always complaining about the menu. So I feel like it doesn't count when I complain about the menu. Um, the one thing, the one, one thing, if I had to find one thing right now that, that bothers me about this camera, is the grip. Now, I really love the grip that the Sony a6600 had. And that, that grip was solid. I did get the grip extension for this camera, and while it does add a grip, it's not the same as the Sony a6600. Um, I do wish it protruded a little bit more, and I'm sure there's a brand out there that does offer a, a bigger, broader grip. Is that the way to describe it? Right now, this works just fine. It, it fits in my hand, and you know, it, I'm, I'm warming up to it. But uh, at the same time, that's the only thing that I can think of that really bugs me about this camera, which is, again, very minuscule. But as I said, it's only been two weeks and there's still lots to explore with this camera. Uh, but so far, those are my my viewpoints and opinions and, and the like. Uh, so now that that's out of the way, let's, let's, let's talk lenses, shall we? I'm not gonna lie, when it comes to switching camera ecosystems, it's really annoying to have to sell off all of your equipment <laughs> to switch to another brand. It's, I'm sure many of you have done this. Uh, if you have, you know, kvetch below. I did invest into the Sony system, I wanna say around May of 2020, which is not too long ago. I went all in. I, I switched from Canon to Sony and I just fell down the rabbit hole of purchasing lenses. Again, pandemic, retail therapy. <sighs> Gas was inevitable, uh, GAS, gear acquisition syndrome, for those who are new here. I sold all of those off and basically did an even swap when it came to focal lengths. Um, not, not identical, but somewhat identical. Uh, one pro tip that I've learned is that you date your camera bodies and marry your lenses. Lenses are meant to last, and buying a used lens is not taboo, my friends. With the exception of the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens, which by the way, does not feel like a kit lens. It It's just, it's a solid lens and takes great photos, uh, especially for vlogging. It's just highly recommend this guy. It's also an F 2.8 shooter. And yeah, this is the only lens that I purchased new. Everything else I got used and 
I lucked out. Uh, every seller that I purchased from, the quality was excellent. And again, the first lens that I did purchase immediately after purchasing this camera was the 16 to 55 millimeter. Uh, again, love this lens so far. I've, I've been using it to shoot my YouTube videos and it's just, it's a workhorse. The other lens that I purchased was the Fujinon 56 millimeter F 1.2, which guys, my favorite focal length ever for taking portraits. And so far this lens is just heaven. I took this lens for a spin over the weekend. My husband and I went to Long Beach, Long Island. New York just got another dose of snow, so there was still ice and snow everywhere on the boardwalk. It was, it was kind of treacherous, but it really did make for a beautiful photo opportunity, especially because coincidentally we got there around golden hour. So the sun was setting and oh, it was just, it was so beautiful. Um, I'm going to pepper in some photos here so you can see what I took, but I took the majority of those photos with this Gorgeous, gorgeous piece of glass. It's a lens that has a little weight to it, but not too much. I'm I'm okay wielding a camera with this on it. All that to say that the 56 millimeter and the 16 to 55 millimeter are not gonna be my go-to lenses when it comes to uh, just casual photography, street photography. Uh, these are going to be my <laughs> professional specialized lenses. So when I shoot a YouTube video like this, I'm gonna be using the 16 to 55. Uh, when I shoot my portraits or self portraits, I'm gonna be using the 56 millimeter. They're not lenses that I would particularly feel comfortable uh, getting out and about with on a regular basis, if that makes any sense. However, when it comes to street photography, I did purchase some additional lenses that I feel like will go hand in hand with my uh, Fujifilm X100V when I don't feel like shooting 23 millimeters that day. As a raging introvert, I think this really comes down to how I'm feeling on a given day. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you introverts out there can relate because there are days where I'm just like, you know, it's okay. I'm just gonna hang back and get the photo from afar. And that is where the 50 millimeter F2 comes in. And this came highly recommended, uh, especially for uh, street photography because again, it is weather resistant. The 50 millimeter F2 on an APS-C is the equivalent of 75 millimeters, I believe. I could be wrong. I'll correct myself in the doobly-doo if that is incorrect, but I believe it's 75 millimeter. I've used my phone calculator, but right now it's kind of backlighting that little toy camera right there. So we'll just go with 75 and if I'm wrong, I'll just correct myself. But anyway, uh, yeah, I have not had the chance or opportunity to take this one for a spin, but this weekend I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have a little fun with it. Then of course I did, I did get the 35 millimeter F2 as well. Uh, this one is the equivalent, I would say, of a nifty 50 on a full frame. The 35 and the 50 millimeter F2, I feel like are just, Essential, good, versatile, all-around lenses that you should have in your Fuji camera kit. At some point, I do plan to get the 23 millimeter F2, but I think, I think I'm good on the lens front right now. I'm gonna take a little break, get to know these lenses as well as I can in the meantime. Uh, and, and yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with this new lens kit that I've amassed, but, but wait. There's one more. I did get the Lens Baby Soul 45 um, for the Fujifilm. And yeah, I just, I couldn't help it. I need to have this in my kit just because I, I love Lens Baby. I love the effects and everything. I just couldn't live without it. But yes, yeah, so those are my thoughts on the X-T4 thus far. These are the lenses that I purchased for my new Fuji kit. Uh, and now you're probably wondering how the X-T4 is going to factor in or how I'm going to use it interchangeably with my Fuji X100V, which is another excellent camera that I've loved using. That has been my run and gun camera. Whenever I go to the grocery store, whenever I run an errand, whenever I'm leaving the house, I feel like in the future, once I start dipping my toes into professional photography, such as portraiture and events, uh, I'm gonna start leaning more heavily on the X-T4, but for everyday run and gun shooting, I'm gonna, just go for the, the X100V. Um, and I can understand why Fuji shooters buy more than one or invest in more than one uh, body because, you know, while, you know, this one is going to be my main camera, it'll be nice to have a backup camera or a B camera like a, an X-T3 or something just to carry the weight whenever I need that extra camera, so to speak. But for now, I'm very, very content, very happy with the X-T4. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm a complete convert. I love it. And I hope to share many, many more adventures with you in the future uh, when it comes to using this camera and the X100V. Um, that's not to say that I'm not gonna be chatting about other 
uh, camera brands. Uh, I, while I did sell my Sony a6600, I did keep or do plan to keep my Sony ZV-1. That was my little tiny vlogging camera that I reviewed my very first video that I published on this channel. That was my very first review. I'll link to it in the doobly-doo up here if you wanna go check it out. Um, but yeah, that is, that is here to stay and I might do another a video on that. I do want to start vlogging more, putting out more, you know, day in the life type vlogs for you guys. Uh, so do look out for that. And, you know, let me know in the comments below, what are, what are some things that you want to see here on this channel? Uh, be reasonable. All right, my friends, that'll do it for me this week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you enjoyed this episode and haven't already, please feel free to like and subscribe down below. I put out a video for your viewing pleasure every week and until the next video, bye.